This supplemental video will provide a detailed overview of how to install EcoFasten's ClickFit rail-based racking system to composition shingle and tile rooftops. Before installing the ClickFit system, download and read the most current installation guide from the EcoFasten website. EcoFasten reminds you that safety on the roof always comes first. Check out the OSHA website to ensure that you are properly utilizing fall protection equipment and that your fall protection anchors are properly attached to the roof. Ecofasten encourages you to assess structural considerations and local requirements before ordering ClickFit. Be sure to acquaint yourself with applicable wind speeds and snow loads, the roof structure and any irregularities, dimensions, material, quality, and spacing of the rafters, and the proper attachment method for the roofing system. After considering these factors, to determine the mount locations, you will need to reference the Code Compliance Certification Letters, which are available for download at the EcoFasten website. State-specific Code Compliance Certification Letters include span tables that define the allowable maximum distance between mounts based on regional climactic data. Rafter locations and aesthetics will determine where you will fasten mounts to the rooftop. The roof attachments must be installed at defined distances based on the position of the array on the roof, the spacing of the rafters, module orientation, and module clamping zones. The allowable racking cantilever dimensions must not be exceeded. The cantilever is determined by measuring the distance between the mounting point of the outermost roof attachments and the end of the rail. They are based on one-third of the bracket spacing. They can be found in the span tables. Module clamping zones are provided by the specific module manufacturer and are used to determine the vertical placement of the rails. The overall dimensions of the array are based on the height and width of the module field, including the distance between the modules. The ClickFit system utilizes a 3 quarter inch gap between the modules and a recommended 3 quarter inch gap between the module rows. These measurements are equal to the space between modules after the mid clamp has been installed. With the array location and dimensions calculated, mark off the mount locations and cantilever zones on the rooftop. The ClickFit rail is available in 7 foot, 10.4, and 13.8 foot lengths. Depending on your array design, you may need to use a splice to connect an additional length of rail. ClickFit's internal splice is a fully bonded structural splice that installs in seconds and requires no fasteners or tools. Insert the end of the splice into the end of the click fit rail and then slide the splice until it reaches the center of the middle indicator bump. Now attach the second segment of rail to the other side of the splice following the same procedure. When properly installed, the two rail segments will be flush against each other with no gap. It is permissible to locate a mount at the splice location. To allow for thermal expansion and contraction, Spliced rail lengths should not exceed 40 feet without a 2 inch thermal break. Temperature variations and other structures, such as metal buildings, may result in increased or decreased thermal break calculations. If this is the case, site specific calculations may be used in place of a 40 foot thermal break. Never install modules over a thermal break. ClickFit can be installed on pitched composition shingle and tile rooftops. If the roof height is greater than 30 feet, consult the EcoFasten engineering team. The system requires the use of EcoFasten's proprietary mounts and L-feet. The entire system can be assembled using a single half-inch socket driver. In this video, we will quickly go over the process for mounting on both roof types using the watertight GF1 composition shingle flashing and the ClickFit tile hook. Consult the instructional manuals for these products for complete mounting instructions and engineering specs. The GF1 flashing and mount can be retrofitted to a composition roof by bolting it to the rafter utilizing a 5 16 by 4 inch lag screw. After drilling a 7 32 inch pilot hole into the center of the rafter and backfilling it with a roof compatible sealant, carefully slide the flashing up under the shingle course that is located directly above the desired mounting location, taking care that it reaches far enough upslope 
to prevent water infiltration between any shingle joints or keyways. Place the click fit L foot over the EPDM grommet of the GF1 flashing. The arms of the L foot should be facing down slope. Then, thread the lag bolt and pre installed sealing washer through the L foot and drive it down into the rafter using an impact driver with a half inch socket. Tighten down the lag bolt until a ring of EPDM rubber is visible around the circumference of the bonded washer. Torque range is usually between 100 to 140 inch pounds, depending on several factors. Consult the ClickFit instructional manual for torque specifics. To install the ClickFit tile hook, slide up or remove the tile or tiles at the location of the mount and then position the tile hook with the hook located in the valley of the tile directly below. When working on flat tiles, try to avoid positioning the hook directly above or under a joint between tiles. The hook can be located on the left or the right side of the base plate depending on the location of the rafter. To change the position of the hook, unscrew the hook arm bolt. With the tile hook properly positioned, drill a 7 seconds inch pilot hole into the center of the rafter and then backfill the pilot hole with a roof compatible sealant. The tile hook is attached to the roof using a 5 16 by 4 inch lag screw. Drive the lag screw into the rafter using a half inch socket. When possible, depending on the location of the rafter, the lag screw should be installed in one of the three pairs of holes located directly next to the hook arm. If the lag screw must be installed in one of the seven holes furthest from the hook arm, install an additional three deck screws in a triangle pattern as shown here. Take care to check that the bolt in the hook arm is tightened down and that the hook arm is securely attached to the base plate. Flash the tile hook and bolt heads following appropriate flashing procedures. Ecofasten's tile hook sub flashing can be incorporated here if desired. Replace the tiles that were removed or install Ecofasten's tile replacement flashing. If a tile needs to be notched, position it in the proper location and then mark the tile lug for notching based on the position of the hook arm. Notching can be done using a grinder or by a chisel. We recommend using a tuck pointed grinding wheel with a diamond tipped blade. With all of your mounts installed, the rails can be lined up on the roof for installation. It is recommended that rails be either left or right justified, as this will assure that you are only cutting the rail on one end. The click fit system allows for the rails to quickly and easily click into the L foot without the need for fasteners or tools. To install the click fit rail to a row of mounts, locate the rail at its desired position on the roof and then place the rail into either the L foot or the tile hook clicker arms. Do not click it into place immediately. Instead, continue placing the rail into the clicker arms for each mount in the row. Ensure that the rail extends a minimum of 2 inches past the last mount attachments for each row. With the rail positioned on the mounts, work your way down the row, clicking it into each mount by rolling the rail back into the clicker arms. You will feel and likely hear an audible click when the rail clicks securely into place. Ensure that the tab on the clicker is aligned with the rail edge. If it becomes necessary to disengage the rail from the clicker, use a flathead screwdriver to depress the tab located at the top of the L foot or hook and then lift the rail out from the clicker arms. Make sure that when the rail is reinstalled that the tab is properly aligned with the edge of the rail. Make sure that rails are properly squared. When rails are not squarely aligned, modules can become skewed as they are installed. When each row of rails has been installed, use a straight edge or an additional piece of rail to determine that the rows are consistently level. The height of the rails can be adjusted by loosening the bolt at the top of the L foot or tile hook. Move the rail up or down as necessary and then tighten the bolt back down. The click fit system mid clamps feature integrated bonding pins, so bonding and grounding the entire system is easy and straightforward. Rail segments are bonded together using the splice. Bonding paths in any given row are carried module to module through the mid clamp. Mid clamps are multiple use. However, if a mid clamp has been removed after tightening, take care that the bonding pins bite into new metal to ensure proper bonding. 
One module jumper per row is used to carry the bond from row to row. To install the module jumper, slide the clip on one end of the jumper onto the flange of a single module in the row, and then slide the clip on the other end of the jumper onto the flange of the adjacent module in the next row. It is recommended that module jumpers be installed to a pair of modules on a perimeter of the array for easy access and inspection. To ground the system, you'll need to install a grounding lug into the flange of one of the modules in the array. One UL2703 compliant grounding lug will need to be installed for each array segment. Install the grounding lug per the grounding lug in module manufacturer's instructions. Consult the ClickFit instructional manual for specifics on approved grounding lugs, torque requirements, wire size, and NEC requirements. Copper wire should not come in direct contact with aluminum at any point on the array. Module level electronics can be attached to the module frame using Ecofasten's MLPE clip accessory or directly to the rail using the MLPE bracket. The clip is designed to be threaded onto the inverter or optimizer flange with the bent corners of the clip pointing down onto the top of the flange. Slide the inverter or optimizer flange underneath the inside of the module frame. The clip slides over the outside of the module frame. Using a half inch deep socket driver, secure the clip to the module frame by tightening down the nut to 140 inch pounds. The bent corners of the clip need to be biting into both the outside of the module frame and the inverter flange to ensure proper bonding. Depending on where the module will be positioned on the rail and whether you're working in portrait or landscape orientation, take care to install the MLPE to a location on the module frame where it will not interfere with the rail. The MLPE bracket allows for microinverters and optimizers to be fastened directly to the click fit rail. To install, tilt and hook the bracket around the top flange of the rail and then set the bracket flush with the top of the rail. Slide the microinverter flange between the MLPE bracket and the serrated bolt flange. Tighten the bolt to 144 inch pounds using a half inch socket. Modules are connected to the click fit rail using end clamps and mid clamps. The pre-assembled clamps are designed to work with module frames from 32 mm to 50 mm in width and can be tightened down using a half inch socket. The mid clamps are designed with integrated bonding pins. Both end and mid clamps feature a set of hooks that allow for them to easily click onto the flange at the top of the rail. Angle the clamp so that one of the hooks grabs the flange on top of the rail and then press down on the clamp until you hear the other hook click into position with the flange on the other side of the rail. The clamp will remain self-standing. Grasping the installed clamp at its base will allow for you to easily slide it along the top of the rail. The pre-assembled end clamps work in conjunction with a click fit end cap. The end cap is designed to help precisely locate the end clamp on the rail, as well as to provide an aesthetic look and keep the rail free of small critters and debris. With the end clamp clicked onto the rail, Simply slide the end cap all the way on to the end of the rail. Then slide the end clamp flush against the raised edge of the end cap. Take care that the end clamp is facing the right way with the leg facing the end cap. The lip on the leg will grab onto the raised edge of the end cap. With the end clamp and end cap installed to the end of the rail, place the module onto the rails and then slide the module flush with the end clamp. After aligning the module with the array corners, Tighten down the end clamp to 144 inch pounds using a half inch socket. Take care to not over torque. Check to make sure that the lip of the clamp head is flush against the module frame. Click the mid clamp onto the top of the click fit rail and then slide it flush against the side of the module frame. Then slide the next module in the row up against the other side of the mid clamp. Align the bottom edges of the modules and then check to assure that both modules are pressed flush against both sides of the mid clamp and that the head of the mid clamp is resting flat on top of both of the module frames. Tighten down the mid clamp to 144 inch pounds using a half inch socket. After installing the last mid clamp in a row, it is possible to either measure the width of the module plus one inch and then cut the rail or install the last module and then cut the rail leaving approximately one inch. As there is some adjustment room available with the end clamp and end cap, an exact cut is not necessary. Rails are commonly cut using cordless bandsaws 
or reciprocating saws. When cutting the rail, take care to make a square cut for best aesthetics and to ease the installation of the end caps. Repeat the process for installing the first module in the next row. Temporarily place a mid clamp between the north-south gap between the modules and slide the first module in the row up to this mid clamp to achieve the proper 3 quarter inch spacing between rows. Then secure the module into place by tightening down the end clamp. It's a good idea to install the bonding jumper to this first module or to the last module in the row. As you lay down each module, make sure to connect the module PV wires to the adjacent module in the row or to any microinverters or optimizers that may have been installed to either the rail or module frame. MLPEs that have been attached to the module frame can be wire managed before bringing them up onto the Keep wires from sagging by clipping them to the module frame using generic wire clips. We recommend the Heiko Sunrunner clips for clipping wires directly to the module frame. NEC requirements also stipulate a minimum bend radius, so tight coiling or bending is not advisable. The optional click fit skirt attaches directly to the front edge of the module frames using the click fit skirt clamp. Skirt segments measure 65 inches, 79 inches, and 80 inches. The total length of skirt needed will typically be the same length as the first row. To install the skirt, it is generally recommended that one clamp per module be used, plus one additional clamp for the end of the array. Locate the first clamp in the row no more than 10 inches in from the edge of the module. Ensure that the flat faces of the clamp are parallel and fully engaged with each other, and then tighten the skirt clamp to 144 inch-pounds using a half-inch socket. Now, working your way down the skirt, drop the next clamp in roughly the same location on the module relative to the clamp on the last module, and then tighten it down. The pre-installed skirt end cap doubles as an internal coupling to splice segments of skirt together. Simply slide the next segment of skirt over the internal coupling and press the segments flush together. When you reach the end of the row, make sure to install an additional clamp within 10 inches of the end of the skirt. Skirt end caps provide a nice aesthetic and simply plug into the skirt. It is permissible to apply a small amount of roof sealant onto the edge of the end cap that will contact the inside face of the skirt to prevent the cap from becoming detached in various weather conditions. For more information on the ClickFit system, please check out our website or email EcoFast and Solar and ask to be put in touch with the engineering, training, or sales team.